In this short video, I'm going to go over saving and pair programming. It's very important that you save your work often, especially if your program is working correctly, because there will be times where you make a lot of changes, possibly to a lot of different sprites and a lot of different scripts, and then all of a sudden, when you run your program, it doesn't work correctly. If you've made a lot of changes and then you can't figure out what caused it to break, sometimes you might want to go back to the original working version or the last saved version that you have. Anytime your program is working correctly or you think everything is going well, save your work. It's a good idea when saving your work or your project that you should use a good naming convention. And that's one that includes the units and the lab, as well as the pages sometimes of the lab that you're working on. That way, when you're looking at your folder or your browser, you can see all of the files in alphabetical order. If you just name it something random, they probably won't be in order and they're going to be very difficult to find later on once you have dozens of projects. So I would suggest for this project, the one that we just worked on on page two, you name it U1L1, click Alonzo. In order to save, I'm going to go to the file menu and then click save as. Since this project was unit one lab one, I'm going to name it U1L1, put a little hyphen and then type in click Alonzo. And when I hit save, it is automatically saved into my folder. Now, if I were to log out and log back in, I can easily access my U1L1 Click Alonzo project, and my code is still going to be there, all my sprites are going to be there, and costumes, and everything is going to be fine. You may have noticed in Unit 1 Lab 1 Page 2, or the previous video, there was a little badge at the top that said, Work with a Partner. The reason that this Work with a Partner badge exists is because we want you to work through these projects and challenges with a partner. Whenever possible, you should be working with someone else, that way you can bounce ideas off of each other, or if one person gets stuck, the other one can pick up the slack, or if both of you are stuck, together maybe you can figure out a solution, only by working together. In the real world, when a team of two people or more works together to write a computer program or solve a problem, this technique is known as pair programming. So when you are pair programming with a partner, you should switch the roles often. Pair programming is awesome because you can split up the work required from each person so you guys can work together, break a project apart into little pieces, and have each partner work on a different part and then combine it. Another reason it's great is because you have another perspective on what you're doing. So you might come up with some ideas that your partner immediately sees as being troublesome, or they might see a problem or a bug in something that you create. Or the other way around, maybe something that you create or you suggest is something they didn't even think about. So it works really well when you're working with someone that's around the same level as you. If you're sitting in a classroom and you're paired up with someone who really has no idea how to use Snap at all, sometimes it can get a little bit frustrating. So what I would suggest is maybe talking to your teacher, letting them know that, hey, the partner I'm working with isn't at the level that I'm at, so maybe they would be better off working with someone closer to their level. If you're really advanced, you may even be able to help them move up a level. By working together, you can help them out with concepts that they might have a lot of trouble with, and that will even solidify your own understanding of it. So even if you're working someone that's not at the same level as you, you can benefit from that. Pair programming is like forming a relationship with someone. Sometimes those relationships don't work, so you just got to find a new partner to pair program with. Just make sure you're honest with your teacher and you're upfront about it. That way you're paired up with someone who's going to work well with you. Often, you'll find that if you just choose one of your friends to pair program with, if they're not at your level or they're not really contributing, you're doing all the work and that could be really frustrating. So make sure to choose a partner that is at your level or someone that you could actually work with or gel with or has great ideas so that both of you benefit from the relationship. In the labs, if you see work with a partner or pair programming swap, you should be pair programming. Obviously, if you're working at home by yourself and working on a project, you're not going to be able to pair program, and that's okay. You might also want to check out the Wikipedia article on pair programming because it goes over exactly what pair programming looks like. It goes over the idea of a driver and the idea of a navigator or observer that is reviewing the lines of code that the driver is working on. 
When you are pair programming, if you're the observer or the navigator, you should not touch the computer. When you're the observer or navigator, it can be really tempting to want to take control of the computer, move some blocks around and start coding, but you really should leave it all to the driver. The driver is in full control of the computer. The navigator or observer should just be telling the driver what they're thinking. It's okay to be the navigator and tell the driver exactly what they should be doing. Just make sure you explain the rationale or the reasons for doing or coding the way you're suggesting. It's really important though, when you're pair programming, you switch roles often. See you in the next video.